Well hello and welcome to another video and today I'm at Lake Hill Nature Reserve which is uh, just outside of the Cotswolds and it used to be an old airfield from World War II and they used to fly the Dakotas out here and on here you see some history all about it just there So this is the history of the uh, actual fields that we're going to be walking across today. RAF Blake Hill Farm and all the uh, aeroplanes and stuff they used to fly out and this is the actual map of what it was. You see we're down here, just there. You even had the flying nightingales out of here. this is what it's been turned into, saved in Wiltshire's Magnificent Meadows. It looks like we got the Ritz for insects. I've got a smaller version of this in my garden. It's for bees and I get uh, the leaf cutter bee in my garden making its nests. What the leaf cutter bee is is they go in one of these holes um, and uh, they carry uh, leaves that they've cut. And I've seen them, they drag it in there, they build their nest. They lay their, lay their eggs and then they fly away and their eggs hatch and eat their way out. And I can't see Ah, yeah, here we are, down the bottom here. So, this is a prime example. So you've got this one here that's covered up, and some are down here as well. So they eat their way out of there, and fly away. They're a solitary bee. But we're at the top end now. So I've seen the kestrels out here by this clump of trees here, just there. So what I might do is I just might, there's a trough just there, I just might sit, oh he's there, he's there, he's there, he's there, he's there, I can see him, I can see him, this clump of trees here, he's just above it, oh now he's gone again, right, so this seems to be a good spot, so what I'm going to do is I might set up my tripod around about here and uh, zoom in on that area, because that's twice now I've seen him in the same area, so let's go and do that, so this bunch of trees here, this is where I've been seeing a kestrel fly up and down, and generally around this area. So I've got my Nikon all set up. I've got it in movie mode. And what I do is I save my movie mode to U2. And so if I want to quickly switch between that and my wildlife settings, I just flick it from U2 to U1. And I can take pictures. So I'm in movie mode at the moment shooting 4k 30 frames because it gives me an extra gives me an extra crop to get in there although in this instance i think i might tone it down to 1080 60 because the underwear is still quite tight in there but anyway i'm just going to sit here i've, I've positioned myself next to this uh 
blackberry bush just to give myself some natural sort of like cover so to speak so hopefully we won't see the kestrel in the grass you might see you know uh, bird species especially this long grass where you might get sort of like bullfinches and that brings a snow chat fence posts and stuff for birds can sit on you know, branches coming out of trees you know, that sort of stuff you can get hares and rabbits in the fields you know, so just uh, and also you know have a look back from where you've just come from as well you know, just uh, take your time because you you know, you could miss something and see something in a tree or on a fence post. And just have a look. So uh, I've stuck myself underneath these uh, rather nice trees. Um, I've got the Kestrel flying in this field. It's going up from there, up to there, back again. So I'm going to spend my time here. But behind me a huge bank of storm cloud coming and uh, I have bought my umbrella because I did uh, was it I was expecting this you knew there was something about that gnarly old tree over there and they are landed in that tree absolutely wonderful so probably here the wind is coming in so I'm going to cut it short here wind noise rather and to accentuate the, uh, the the sounds around us and nature around us yeah right keep looking around me it just keeps dying about right i'll catch you later so there's the sight in that tree it's a kestrel just followed him all the way across this field and he's perched himself up there So now I've got the video of the Kestrel, now for the hard part, waiting for him to reappear, so I can take a picture. 
which would be nice. If not, we've still got the video of it. The very last clip you saw, he was right over there. And uh, too far away really to take a picture. But he has been within the confines of this field, which is what I'm hoping for. So, I've been lucky with that cloud. It seems to be moving more over to the more over to the uh, east over there. I keep getting uh, SD card error on my GoPro. It was playing up when I was in the uh, Lake District. It's still played up now, even though this is a new SD card in the GoPro. Um, right. So I was going to say. Oh yes, settings wise on the uh, on the Nikon. So I'm shooting in manual. Um, it's really not that hard to be honest. Uh, just set your ISO. Let me get the screen on. Just set your ISO to um, set your ISO to auto ISO. Um, I tend to go sort of like 100 uh, lowest and around about 10,000 on the high high end. Um, in manual mode, don't really set your, your minimum shutter speed because it doesn't really matter in manual. Because uh, the point is, you want that control. So your aperture I set at wide open at 400 mil was 6.3. So uh, whether I'm at 400 or 100, my aperture will remain at 6.3. Now, what what that enables me to do is, is uh, if I want to increase or decrease my shutter speed. So for instance, now I'm on f6.3, and I turn the rear dial for my. Um, shutter speed so I'm on 1200 to 1200 at the moment and that's giving me an ISO of a thousand so you always work on high ISOs but it just gives you that control especially when you shoot casuals you want especially in flight you want a real good fast shutter speed and I'll probably up that to around about 1600 which I have just done so as you can see when I'm when I'm panning around I'll listen this I'm panning around with the camera now I can increase and just decrease my uh, shutter speed with the rear dial just here and if I want to increase my aperture I can just here but uh, it's on 6.3 and if I just go 1, 2, that's f8 so back to again that's 6.3 if I go up 1 that's 7.1 which is where I go if I just want to increase it just a little bit more and that's it, that's my settings, manual mode, auto ISO, white balance set to auto um, keep your aperture wide open at its uh, furthest focal length of 6.3 and then you can just adjust your shutter speed with your rear thumb and that is that anyway still waiting for this kestrel right I've got the kestrel right over there Oh, got it down in the grass. Fast shutter speed, 1600. Uh, shooting plus 1.3 EV. Just have a quick look at them. So that was a good couple of minutes uh, with the old uh, cash draw, must have got 50 to 60 shots off. Um, took some more video as well. Incidentally, my video settings for the Nikon D7500, let's turn the camera off for a minute. Um, I do shoot in 4K. Um, I shoot in 4K for one reason only, is because it gives me the extra 1.3 crop. So in addition to your crop of 1.5 anyway on your 400mm lens, which makes it 600mm effectively uh, full frame equivalent, you then get an extra 1.3 which then gives you I think 760mm if you uh, take video in 4K, uh, which is why you're getting some good images of, uh, of the cash draw in flight. Um, so that's that's what I do, is I shoot 4K 30 frames per second. Um, and what I do is when I edit is I downscale it to 1080, uh, 1080-30 in this instance. Um, but that's just that's, that's my settings. I, I have it on uh, 1 60th of a second uh, shutter speed, because obviously it's 30 frames, so you just times it by two. Um, and I, I just adjust the uh, aperture accordingly because um, when you're looking in a live view you can only take video in live view um, it, you get zebra stripes so you just keep adjusting the aperture until the zebra stripes go but that's it, that's my settings for video
Right, I'm going to evaluate what I've got and I think I might go because I've got quite some quite good footage here. And I think I might continue my walk. Well that turned out really well being stood there underneath them two trees. So just them two trees just behind me, that's where I was uh, stood. And I have this whole area in this field is where this uh, kestrel was flying about. And I've got some really good images and uh, some good video as well, I think. Uh, I'm still learning the video on the Nikon D3500, you know, with birds. It is quite hard um, doing it through live view. With the uh, Canon M50, I can do it through the viewfinder, see? But anyway, um, I'm going to go to a different part of the uh, nature reserve now and uh, see what there is. In fact, I just had a deer. I was doing a bit of the camera down there. I had a deer right in front of me and uh, couldn't really get anything of it. Anyway, let's crack on. It's turned out to be a really good day. Really good day. So I've had a real good time here today at the uh, Blake Hill Farm Nature Reserve. Um, I'm going to go home now, it's getting on a bit. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon I think, just gone. But yeah, it's a really nice place. I'll, I'll have to come back here again, um, but this time come a little bit earlier. I did leave it a bit late in the day to come back, but it was just a recce. You know, just to scout out, see what it was like. But anyway, I'll say thank you for watching, uh, and I'll see you on the next video. See you.